back. Yes, I'm back. Okay, so I'm working on the uh, sculpting of the critter. And there's a lot of areas right now where I don't have enough geometry in the right places to really clear out the shapes I'm trying to make. But I don't want to go any higher yet because I still need to make the, um, the basic forms for everything. Then I'll go back in and refine them at a higher resolution and, and then another higher resolution and get in some little, little bit of detailing. So we're back in ZBrush now. Now from here on out, well, we still have to make the lower back legs. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing we did with the front legs. And that's that we're going to stretch out and in the uh, toes. And as before, it's going to be... Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Am I, oh, there we go. Drag out that one front inner toe, front outer toe, outside long toe, inside short toe. Now we're also going to drag in between the toes because that foot was rather long and flat. We want it to look more like T-Rex legs than like elephant legs, or feet, rather. Now we go back to the standard brush. We're going to shrink it again. And we're going to bring this out. Come on. And stroke this down. Yes, it go up. Make this toe thicker. And then we need to smooth that just a little. Now cut that out. Okay, there we go. And then do this toe and tendon. Alright. And then finally the one on the back of the foot. And let's zoom it out. Okay, now we need to go ahead and add on a couple of other things, namely some of the bony landmarks on the sides of the knee and faint ones on the side of the foot and on the inside of the knee and on the back of the knee. Now we frame and the legs are pretty much ready for the next tier of detailing. So pretty much from the neck to the base of the tail, at this level of detail, I'm done. So it's now time to give the tail a little bit of detail. As things stand right now, the tail has kind of an oval cross section with most of it being mostly teardrop shape. So we need to add in some adductor muscles on the sides. Basically, adductor muscles, uh, for on the, uh, in a very general sense, adductor tends to bend, and I forget the term for the ones that tend to straighten, like on your arm, your bicep is an adductor, it bends, the triceps are the other kind, it extends, 
you need to know what kind of movement you want this kind of this particular body part to have and that's the kind of muscle you want to add uh, since it's a symmetrical movement on this tail effectively it's all the same it's however it does not need any muscles up and down per se because oh yeah uh, hip bone keel A lot of reptiles have like a keel back here. The, 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 there's a, the, in the hip bone, if you look at a side view, it's like this, but then it's, it's like this, but then it's got a keel bone coming down. And that's what anchors the tail. So we need to blend that in and bring it like that. Now the thing about the tail is it has tends to have high tall fins, not fins, but uh, I can't remember the term. It's the term for the, the back the bone coming out the, the, the top side of the vertebrae. They tend to be rather high on the back of the tail again because these that joint doesn't bend and I need to reduce the intensity a lot uh, let's bring it down to one yeah because I need to kind of even out the height of that keel And now I'm actually going to turn Lazy Mouse on, shrink this brush again, increase the intensity a lot because Lazy Mouse actually reduces your intensity. And I'm going to stir and I'm going to drag down the center of the spine. And hit one, two, three. Okay, now to make that reduce this, smooth this again a little bit more just to get this all blended properly and uh, appropriate. Yeah, and the end result is we now have our tail basically done. There's a couple areas we need to smooth a little bit more, but that's the tail. And smooth that out. Yeah. Now frame out. And now we have the head to make. Now again, I've got several reference images I'm going to be using as a basis to work from for this head. But one of the key things on almost all of them is this is too narrow top to bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the move topological and I'm going to grab up here and move up. And I'm going to grab down here and move down. It's also too narrow this way, so let's make it even wider. Yeah. That neck wider. Okay, the overall size of the head is good now. But now there's the problem of the shape of the head. Okay, so what we're going to do is I need to come up with a design for this head that does not N -O -T, N -O -T, look like a rhinoceros or a triceratops. Actually, while I'm thinking about looking at these proportions, it's too low slung for the kind of 
heavy beast I want. It's, you know, low slung is good, but this is too much. So I'm going to grab here and drag up a bit. That actually looks really good. And then grab the tip of the head, bring it up. Yeah. Notice it already has a sense of mass, a sense of weight. Looking at that from, you know, this frontal view. Now, like I said, if I wanted a nice uh, non what's the word? non uh, rhino head, one of the biggest things I got to worry about is the horn setup. Now, looking at horns, I could do any kind of natural critter horn on this. You know, you could do, you know, ram horns coming and rolling back, but that wouldn't look quite right. It would look more, uh, less, in, less intimidating, I guess you could say. Because even with the, you know, big horn ram horns, people look at them and they think, Mountain sheep. Not that scary. The same token, impala horns. Heck no. However, if I took, there's one kind of cattle where the horn comes out and forward. If I took that. So I'm going to go ahead. Now one thing I'm going to do with this head, the mouth is going to have to be partially open for the default shape. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and bring this in. This is going, the mouth is actually going to be made out of a separate set of geometry that will then be blended in to the rest of the critter. That's the inner mouth. We'll worry about the rest later. Now, we're going to go back to the standard brush for making some of these shapes. And first things first is we've got to turn off lazy mouse. Yeah. We're going to. Oh, that's way too much strength. We need to turn that down to about the yeah, six or seven. Open up the back and build this up. This is going to be the back of the mount for the horn. That's going to be the front. I'm going to hold Alt and push in to create where the horn's the actual depression for where the horn is going to fit. Come on, Shinji. No, baby girl. No. You can't get in my lap right now. All right, I'll give you. Yeah, sweet kit. What's the matter with you? What is the matter with you today? I need a button that when I push it, it has a little uh, referee suddenly pop up and go, Wee! Flag on the play, feline interference. Ten yards. Something like that. Okay, now, this is good, that's good, it, it, it's good. It's got a problem, though, that now I need actual bone structure. And yes, heads have bone structure. And I could do, oh, I don't know, a Giganotosaurus or some other kind of weird bone structure, but I'm actually going to start by... I'm not going to worry about any of that. I'm going to start off by... Coming out and down and in. I'm going to make it smaller and more intense. Nice. Out, 
around and then and then there's another bone here and I gotta make sure that it works for binocular vision so now I need to move some of this a little bit so that the eyes will be able to see straight ahead because this is a predator slash uh, not predator, uh, a carnivore. So it's predator slash uh, um, scavenger. Yeah, why couldn't I think of that word? And now, next thing is I need to bring down where the jaw is going to be before it blends with the the new piece of geo I'm going to add for the lower jaw. And Now, to make that new lower jaw piece, frame, I'm going to export this. Uh, Thunder Bod 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch over to 3D Studio Max. And we're going to hide Mr. F Mr. Human Figure. And I'm going to import that uh, Thunderbod 2. Import. And this is what we get. When it's not focused on the polygons, it's already looking pretty decent. And it is just about 10,000 polygons, which means if we use this, this is actually low enough to work in most games, even though it's missing a jaw, eyes, and the details are really, really rough and, and, and raggedy. Okay, now what we got to do is we've got to come in here. First of all, let's change the color of this so we can actually see it when it's not selected. Ah, let's make it pale blue, because it's already a blue. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create this simple box. This box is going to end up being the bottom edge. And it's going to be about as wide. Now, what we're going to do, gonna edible poly. We're going to grab this. We're going to drag it in a little bit. I'm going to make sure that this, let's, let's make this one smooth with highlights because we're going to need to see how far over we need to bring this part of the jaw. We need to bring it to about there. Next, we're going to select this, invert, and delete that, set that, uh, that part right there, and mirror. Copy. And then we're going to attach it together with the other one. And we're going to select the center vertexes and weld them. And now it's, you know, four vertexes. Next step is to select those vertexes. And we're going to narrow them. And select those. And we're going to drag them back this way a bit. Now, we're going to select those polygons, no, polygons, those uh, lines that go down the center, and hit Control Backspace, and what that does, it gets rid of those extra lines. Now, select that, and we're going to extrude by normal. I've talked about normals in the earlier portion. We need to extrude it out to there. And then we're going to grab these vertexes, move them back to about there. And then we're going to select the polygons here and here. <clears throat> and we're going to extrude them up. Okay. 
Now, we're going to move the pivot point to here. And then we're going to pivot it We're going to pivot to where it's a good spot closed. Then we're going to move the pivot point to where the jaw will most likely be, which would be back around here. Then we open it partially. The reason why we're doing only a partial open is because for the most part when you're creating a creature that's going to be rigged you know by that I mean it's going to be given an articulation within the program you want it to be at it, the middle range of most of its movement now if I mesh smooth it it's a couple times we have a decent shape and this is just a raw basic geometry, just like before, except I don't like the back end where it meets the mouth. So we're going to select all of those lines and we're going to connect them together. Then we're going to grab these back ones back over here and move them up. So now when I mesh smooth, at one two collapse all yeah it kind of goes into where that it looks a lot more like an open animal mouth so now with just the jaw selected file export selected thunder jaw thunder 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 jaw oh Let's just go ahead and delete these and go back to that because this is not the last time we are going to be coming back to 3D Studio Max. But now we're back in here and we're going to import that jaw. And for those who aren't familiar how we do this, we append a polymesh 3D. We select that polymesh and then we import thunder jaw and now we have a jaw and you can tell what subtools are active by their shading if it's not active like the body you know right now nothing I do on the body is going to do anything but when I select it suddenly it's white and the jaw is gray I select the jaw the jaw goes white and the body goes gray Okay, so now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually divide it a couple times. About 34,000, 35,000 uh, uh, vertexes, 45,000 polys. We're going to give it a very basic DynaMesh. The reason for that is this gets rid of a lot of the shapes that we didn't want along the corners. And it gives us a decent smattering of polygons to work with. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to move. Move topological. We're going to move this up. Oh, I forgot. I need to X. Here, move up. Bring it out. Now, the next thing is... We're going to grab the center here. We're going to move down a bit. The reason being is because we want this to be really heavy jawed. And the next thing is we're going to bring it in. We're going to move it inwards a bit. So looking at from the front, it has more of a 
shaped like this where the mouth is the widest part of the head. And now, drag this out. And now the head is looking more like an actual head. It may not look like a dinosaur yet, but it's looking like an actual head. So now let's go back and select this. We're going to merge it down. And now it's all one piece. But it's not. To show you what I mean, I'm moving the jaw without, or I'm moving the mouth without affecting the jaw. So we're going to solve that when we do the DynaMesh. But for right now, we're just going to grab a couple of these vertexes and move them in. It'll blend better that way. And then we look down below and we see that the inside of the mouth doesn't meet. So we're going to go ahead and just drag it down in. Rotate back here. I'm going to drag this back in. So that it blends a bit. Okay. Now, zoom out. We're going to move the shape of the snout. Okay, and as we can see, there's an there's an upper curl. Oh, that's too big. Upper curl right here. followed by a long lower curl yeah. that long lower curl may be a bit too much and now we're going to really deeply push in where the eye socket will be while at the same time pulling out the bottom of the cheekbone. Okay. Now, frame out. And we're going to add a couple more details just to give it, we're going to make the back of the skull back here a slight ridge down the center of the skull. We're going to blend that brow in with the top of the and we're going to inflate it. Again, that, that gives it more thickness, more heft. And now I'm going to move it and I got to make where the nostril will be. We're going to do that first move when I say move, I'm meaning move topological. We're going to grab on the sides and push them in. And then we're going to turn it at an angle slightly and drag it back. And then we're going to use ALT inflate or yeah, alt inflate to cause it to deflate inward then follow it up with an alt standard to dig it in okay that's the basic shape but we need an or that's the basic you know presence of one but now we need to make the shape different so we're gonna
Okay, and that's a better nostril, base nostril. And that is your the basic shape without teeth, eyes, or horns, or claws of our Thunder Drake. Let's go ahead and take a screenshot. And this is going in. I'm keeping a record of the screenshots of development. The reason for this, I usually do this, is there are rare occasions where people will accuse other people of stealing products. I have never been I've never been accused of stealing a product like, you know, copying the geometry or anything like that, but I've had people do it to me. So I keep a record so that if I say, hey, he's selling my product and they say prove it, I can say, okay, here, 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 every bit of my production process. Now, I recently had that. I had an item that I had on Thingiverse. Somebody copied it and put it up for sale on CG Trader. And quick cease and desist, uh, not went away, but the point's there. And right now I am saving the uh, current, uh, the picture of the current state after having cropped it. Yeah, that's the thun basic Thunder Drake. And hello, Tawny! I'm sorry, I, I, I was distracted by actually sculpting, so I did not see that anyone had actually come back in. Uh, let me get some soda real quick, and then I'll be going into the next stage on the Thunder Drake. Yeah. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to do a bit of geometry cleaning up, which means first I'm going to subdivide it a couple of times, delete the lower subdivisions, and then here I really have to inflate them a bit because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be merging it together. And by inflating it here, the geometry will overlap a bit, and Dynamesh will blend it into one piece. And what all I gotta do is smooth it. Let's increase the intensity of my smooth. And a little bit more. And on the side of the jaw, inside of the mouth, smoothing out areas that need it. Frame. And what we're doing, like I said, we're smoothing out some of these areas that got a little jaggy after the blending. Okay, frame, zoom out, and let's look around. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Now, next thing that we need to do is I need to go back in. I'm going to give it a level of subdivision to make it even better. And we're going to delete the lower. Now's when I'm going in and add a bit more detail, like slashing a deeper line between the muscles. Um, clearly marking some of those uh, bony prominences. I, should say, I shouldn't say slashing a deeper line, I should say slashing a broader line. Or, or a sharper line, rather. So, like, there's a line here. 
um, one that comes down this way a line back here and then here no not there uh, here a deeper line between the thigh and that little The sharper divide where these, like the, the, the folds of skin hang, and then a brief hit with a smooth. Like I said, our primary purpose here is just refining detail in the areas that we had are already defined the basic masses and the shapes and by giving us a, a, a brief hit with the slash brush and then a little bit of smoothing we get our nice defined areas where the muscles are and some of the other details but this is not the last this is not the only thing we have left to do before taking it to the next step it's just one that makes things a lot easier in in the future. All right, so now it just comes down over this way and comes down this way, and I see an area I have to deal with because on the original the geometry is rather odd there, not original, but on the previous edition, the geometry was kind of odd there. So let's pull that muscle around. Let's shrink the mouth. Yeah, because it's just gonna. So that's one muscle there, and then we smooth it. Smooth. And that helps bring it out. Helps define where that where that uh, muscle is. By get, by making these muscle area the muscle division sharper, it's going to make it easier to plan them out later. Let's make the mouse a bit bigger because we want this to be a deeper sharp, uh, not deep, a wider sharpness, but not as deep. And then a little bit of smooth. And we want to make sure that we get this one a little bit deeper because that will help divide the actual geometry where the leg and the where the calf and the thigh meet. And then go deeper again. And just a little. Sorry if I got quiet there. I'm still I'm trying to concentrate on getting these done. Frame and okay, we're looking a lot better. It's a lot better to find detail here. Now let's go ahead and make the maps wider again, and we're going to stroke 
underneath the rib cage. Hit it twice. And we're going to smooth out this area. But let it be sharp down here. A little. Okay, and what we have now, we have ourselves a mostly detailed, well not detailed, but the basic shapes. You see there's some aspects of the details that are going to be in the texture. Okay, I see a problem. Right over here, the back of this muscle needs to go back further onto the beastie. So let's start off by using standard. And... Pull it out. Actually, let's have it blend in with the uh, adductor muscle for the tail a bit. And we're going to smooth it here to try and get it to blend better. Okay, and now from this angle, I can see I need to get this up. blend that. Now let's get our, sh our slash and we're going to slash here. I'm going to blend it a little bit to let it smooth out. And then we're going to drag it across this way. frame and it still needs a little bit more work but it's more in the job for I can move the topology to get the results I want instead of having to worry about inflation or anything like that there we go now the thing is, a lot of the detail will in fact not be done on the geometry. Like I was getting ready to say, it will be done with the texture maps. So, once I have the basic shapes down, which for the body I do, let's go ahead, we need to smooth that part of the leg out simply because it was getting too sharp and we need to give it a nice... Uh, yeah. Let's bring it out to better fit some, you know, body fat. Because not everything is huge. Now, let's refine some of the bony areas like back here over the hip over this shoulder which is going to be a larger bone the front of the knee which will be a smaller bone but then we're going to go back in and we're going to polish the front of it almost completely flat and then smooth the edge just a little and give a little bit of that it's not exactly realistic but it does get the point across when we you know nobody has an idea what the knee bone of a thunder drake looks like really and now I'm going to make sure to actually we're going to dig in behind this bone and over here as well and then we're going to flatten oh too big we're going to flatten the back 
of the pastern's knee. We're going to actually no. We're going to smooth out between the toes. And we're going to use inflate. Which is already up too high and too small. Plate to inflate to the sides for this one toe because this one toe is small. It's a small bean, small toe bean. We're then going to draw on where the edge of a claw bed would be and smooth out the rest of the toe there because we're going to make the claws the actual physically separate geometry now I know what you're thinking for those of you who do a lot of 3D printing why would I do that the answer is actually kind of simple it's easier to define the claws and the toe as separate materials if they actually are separate objects and you want light to behave differently on the claw than it is on the rest of the foot. So we make claw beds. It's just like on a T-Rex, it has claw beds. And then let's move. Another problem we'll notice is that, yes, ZBrush does tend to move its brush center or the center rotation to where you were at last but that can sometimes mean that the critter moves off screen and it makes it harder to get to the new area to work on okay and smooth this one out move it in and smooth it again and now we need to add the detail of the tendon so we're going to start up here drag down to the toe start up here and drag down to the toe start up here and drag down to the toe And then this one's just going to drag up and fade away. And that's our clawless footsies. Now the pads, the, the foot pads need to get modified because this is a, a animal foot is not flat. Instead, they tend to have pads that then get flattened on top. Whether it's a bird's claw or a mammal's claw. And then I smooth it out. All I need is, I don't, I don't need to actually do much, just enough to give it shape. Now frame, and now we do the front legs. Okay, move up, zoom in, and just like we did before, we're going to give it, give these things. A nail bed. Now these nail beds are going to be end up being smaller than the ones in the back legs. Because it's going to have smaller claws. Its feet are smaller in the back in the front than on the back because 
it kind of needs those bigger back legs more to to uh, move with. It doesn't so much fight with its claws unless it really has to, as much as use its claws for traction, so that it can charge like a bull or a rhino or a triceratops or a thunder drake. Yes, it's a thunder drake. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have those back legs have bigger claws that dig deeper into the earth for the that burst of that burst of thigh power. Okay. It does have claws, but it, they're they're pretty much just you know, like I said, just for traction or for gripping onto their prey after they've killed it and they want to eat. Which is why the thumb claw for the back foot is actually slightly larger than the thumb claw. Uh, well, the thumb claw of the front foot is actually slightly larger than the thumb claw of the back foot. So yes, as I'm making these critters, I'm actually thinking about how would this work? Why does it have this feature and should I change something because of that feature? Now let's zoom down just a little bit and we're going to once again, draw out we're going to need to make this a little bit stronger and draw out the tendons and then the tendon here and blend. The tops of the tendons always get blended because they don't suddenly end there. You just kind of blend in with the top upper part of that part of the leg. And then here. Now I frame. Once again, the basic shape of the body and legs is mostly done. But now it's time for the head. Oh. Almost literally nothing in there. Right, hold it, hold it, get a couple drops. Put this in the trash can and get a new generic soda. Yay. While I'm doing this, let's go ahead and move it over and zoom in on the head. And I've got nobody in here. Yay. Now, I realize that 11.38 is not likely to have a lot of people watching, but this will eventually be up on YouTube as a multi-part series, obviously. So, Right now, I've actually got it at a pretty high resolution for, for the level of detail I'm working on, but I can deal with it because it feels more comfortable to me. A lot of people are still stuck on, you know, you have to be at the work at the absolute lowest possible resolution to get the detail level you want, which actually, I can see that. I can totally agree. But that's until you can judge what to do to get the look you're going for at the resolution you're at. And so therefore, I think that I am at a point where I can do the level of details that I want to do. at 
this point. I am not, this is not the final mesh. This is not a detailed sculpting. This is getting the basic forms because the final version of this mesh will actually be much lower and it will be brought in to 3D Studio Max to have the eyes put in and the teeth put in to the inner mouth. And I need to shrink and once again deflate the inner nostril. I need that nostril to have a shape. Actually be present. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the inner mouth goes further back. So, and we're going to switch to the move topological. And so we're going to grab as close to the center as possible and go back there now what will happen in during a render unless you're staring down the mouth this will not appear to be a hollow cone but rather it will look like it's the actual you know, inner mouth and throat ending in a dark, dark digestive tract. Okay, we need to go ahead and smooth out the underside of this cheekbone. Okay, that's pretty good. And now we need to go in and start adding in the eye socket. you can see this means that with that as the eye socket it's keeping binocular vision but those are really big eyes so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and increase this right here and then we're going to draw with a slash tool a smaller one the basic shape of the eyelid area followed by a bruise, not so much a bruise, but a softer you know, this is what the thing looks like and once again, it has binocular vision and what we're going to do, we're going to shrink this we're going to sharpen the eye wrinkle we are then going to increase the intensity a whole boatload and actually draw in oh, no we're gonna divide it one more time and we're going to draw in where the eyelid is And then we're going to let's draw 
out the shape. Now the reason we're doing this is when it comes time to take this back into 3D Studio Max, we're going to have a cutout here. We're going to use that cutout to help further define the shape of the shape of the eye. Alright. Lazy mouse, lazy radius thirty. Okay, I'm going to zoom out, and you can see that it has binocular vision. Now, I'll go ahead and frame it again. One of the things I want to do is I want to change the shape of that horn uh, mount. I'm going to make it a bit more triangular. So this comes down a bit, this goes a bit like that. And Excuse me! No. No, little buddy. Oh! Pfft. Carlton, go! Interference! Kitty interference! Flag on the play! Flag on the play! Yeah. Now. For the most part, that's our, again, that's our, that's our general mesh shape. The, there's a couple problems. It doesn't have teeth and it doesn't have eyes and it doesn't have horns or claws. And it's also 1.448 million polygons. I don't care what kind of computer you got. That's going to take a long time to render in a photorealistic ray tracer. Ah. So what we're going to do, we got to reduce the polygon count, but we want to keep the shapes, we want to keep the articulation, um, we also want to give it another, actually let's give it one more subdivision level, so that I can... smooth the eye socket area because it's starting to look less like it was it's a bit too jagged for a living thing all right now we're getting ready to do one thing that we did before that z remesher however the problem with z remesher is it's kind of random but with z remesher guides we can tell it you know we want to keep an area in you know this area here as a poly loop, a loop of, po of polygon lines. No, that didn't come out right. There we go. Let's 
going to be where the eyes are. You want to make sure that the feet and the ankles come out as pretty good, pretty close to lines instead of loops. Oh, come on. Hold on just a second. I'm getting a problem with this task manager doing what I think it's farking doing. System interrupts. No. Okay, there we go. It's stopping. All right. So let's actually bring it down here. Let's turn off lazy mouse. Increase the brush size. See if that helps. What the heck? Come on, it's not behaving. There we go. That puts a loop right around the... No! What?! Come on. Okay. There we go. Yeah. This way it makes the problem one of the problems that it has when doing like limbs is it has a tendency to want to do Spirals instead of rings for going up the limbs. That's bad for rigging and mapping. Okay, frame. Okay. Now the thing is, going lengthwise, it'll be rings instead of spirals because of the whole uh, symmetrical aspect. All right, now I'm going to take a screenshot. And save it. Okay. And now I'm going to Z remesh. Z remesher, I want to make sure that the curve strength is 100%. I want it to obey every single bit. Oh no. Okay. Just a second longer. It seems to forget that I also wanted them on the eyes. So let's get this in position. Redraw the eyes. No. Okay, now we frame. Yeah, we got it all. All right. Now, we want it to. 100% curve strength. And Z remesh. Yay! By the way, I'm putting this up. Those are not, not going to need it for a few. It's going to be mostly keyboard and mouse from here for a while. Oh! Mm. <sighs> 
it'll take a bit, bringing it down from almost 6 million polygons down to probably close to 70 or 80,000. And I've got nobody in here, so hi, YouTube folks. The problem is this may be also slowing down my broadcast. You guys watching it on recording, you're going to see nice and clear the whole way through. But on broadcast, you might be getting some blur and some machine gunning speech, stuff like that. Okay. And I was wrong. That's way too few polygons. So, let's bring this from 5 to 10. Z remesher. And we are at 24,000 polygons. Once again, I don't think so. It lost a decent amount of detail, especially around the eyes. Let's try increasing adaptive size to 75 and see what happens. Yeah, see, it's even frozen for me. I have 240 drop frames, so that's great. <clears throat> that's, you know, 30 frames a second. That's 8 seconds of total dead air. Come on, ZBrush. I know you can do this. I want it to be around 40 to 50,000 polygons before I bring it into three Studio Max for making in the eyeballs and the horns and the toesies and the teethies and the tongue. I can't forget the tongue. Excuse me. I've forgotten the tongue on a couple of critters before. I had to go back in and completely redo it. Okay. 32,000 polygons. Still a note. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the eye because that's where we'll that's where we seem to be losing most of our details. Zoom in, and now we're going to increase the polygon count to fifteen and try it. And whatever I get, it's going to be higher than thirty thousand, so that's going to be the one I'm going to keep for this base geometry. <sighs> I'm also going to add in that little webbing that they often portray a T-Rex and the like as having. So, yeah. 
cheeks on the inside of their cheeks. You know, arr, arr, that sort of thing. And when we look at the line fill at this 41,000 polygon, you can see that we do in fact have an eye socket joint that we can remove and reset for when it comes time to add the eyes. So let's go ahead and frame. And this is the raw geometry of our beastie. So we're going to go ahead and export this. As Thunderbod 3, because we don't want to write over anything. Save. And then next, we're going to go back to 3D Studio Max. Import Thunderbod 3. Import. And let's see what we've got here. Let's go ahead and hide our... We can see a good, a, a better example. This is a size comparison now. That's a monstrously big Thunder Drake. When that thing runs, it's loud. So let's hide our big... Hide our little human buddy. Zoom in. Or not zoom in, but frame it. And with smoothing on, it looks great. It looks almost like the original did before we reduce the polygon count. Now, there's one thing we have to do, and that is we have to cut out the eye sockets in, so that we can then extrude them inwards. So we're going to select these polygons. And we're going to delete them. Yay! Look! We have eye sockets. Select those, zoom in. And it appears that there is, in fact, one polygon issue right there. Delete. Yeah, there we go. Now, to actually make the eye sockets, we're going to clone this. Edit, clone, copy. We're going to hide the original, hide unselected. We're then going to, we've got those edges selected. We're going to select all of the facets that are directly connected by vertex or line. invert and delete. Now we have two absolutely perfect mirrors so we're going to delete one of them. And let's go to the left view. Now we've got that inner line. If we select the outer line it selects everything but that corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just delete this one. So if I hit that, no, that didn't work. So I just have to remember that corner I've got to delete. I've got to select when it goes time to delete the inner, delete the extra. 
All right, we got this. Now what we're going to do, first we're going to shrink it a little. Then we're going to uh, chamfer it. I'm going to select this and shrink it again. But this time we're going to move it in. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to select these polygons right here. And the vertexes. There's two vertexes. So we're going to target weld. We're going to move this vertex and weld it to that one. Do the same thing here. This vertex to that one. The reason for this is so that when we zoom in, when we move in again, we won't have some hor it's, it's going to be a nice even ring instead of that or mildly erratic one. Now we're going to chamfer again. And we're going to select just the inner. And we're going to bring it even deeper in. Okay, that's our, uh, that's our, uh, the straight front we got right there. So this will still have its binocular vision. Now, actually what we're going to do is we're going to move it all the way here. The reason being is because we want to change the shape now. At this point, we're trying to we're going to try to make it spherical, or circular. Actually, the the, the rest of the socket will be spherical. Enlarge that. Select the vertexes and spherify. Yeah, that's good. Now, bring it here. Rotate it. And enlarge. Make sure it's big enough. And then we've got to make sure that it fits in the thunderbod. Make sure it doesn't poke through. So to, part of the way we're going to do that is we're going to make it a bright pink. Hot pink. Easily visible. If it comes through at any point other than where it's overlapping with the eye socket, there's a problem. Okay. Now, we're going to take that. Let's go ahead and hide this again. Oh, unhide. Sorry, bud, four. And we're going to hide the body again. What was that? Unhide by name, Object 01. There was no Object 01. Oh, I know what it was. Yeah, that was the, the hip. So we're going to go ahead once again. We're going to select, select that. We're going to extrude it out by chamfering it a little. And then selecting the edge. We're going to bring it into here, shrink it just a little, and then we're going to chamfer it once more, select that last bit, we're going to collapse it. And this closes off our eye, the, the inside of our eye socket. Now the next thing we're going to do is we need to make sure that this shape works. So ring, connect, and then this and this, we're going to select and loop Z, and we're going to chamfer it so that we can get a bit more of a smooth. Now, 
we need this has got an x axis we're going to mirror it but before we do we're going to get rid of this last bit of geometry we don't need and mirror oh forgot to change to a front facing viewpoint mirror copy the sucker we're going to reset selected and notice that it inverted and then normal and collapse all now we're going to import or unhide our buddy okay now we're going to add we're going to attach both of these eyeball parts and now we're going to select both of these rings we're going to convert it to polygon to, to vertexes and we're going to call it, we're going to weld them And there we go. Now, do we have any loose areas? No edges selected. This is a watertight mesh. And it's got a decent edge flow following around the details of where the muscles are. Giving us nice loops up the leg. You can see them right here while still maintaining the musculature. So now the next thing to do is to actually make the eyeball. Yay! Eyeballs! Mm-hmm. Oh! Well, like I said, this will not be intentionally for 3D printing, though I will probably end up printing a copy of it myself. This is for my actual day job, which I am designing this on my own. This is not a commission per se. But now, we have binocular vision in our little critter. As we can see right here, we can see the inside of the eye sockets on both sides. So we need to make sure that the eyeballs at least partially appear to have the ability to become binocular. And we started off with the actual sphere. Now we zoom in, and we got to position it so that as much of it as possible is in contact with the eyelid. We're going to be tweaking this later, but right now, that's the basic position we want our eyes in. Or is it? Okay, we're going to bring it, make it a little bit bigger. It's going to be larger than would normally be naturally, physically capable of fitting into this space. The reason is, is because there are creatures that do have flattened eyeballs. Okay. Double check. Okay, we need to move back just a little. Oh, wrong thing was moving. Let's decrease the radius a little. That's good. Now we're gonna hide everything but the but the little ball here. Now, first things first, we need to figure out how large we want the iris and pupil. And in doing so, we're going to, that'll help us determine how many segments. That would be a rather large, yeah, that would be good, because it's going to be mostly iris, because it's going to be kind of quasi-reptilian. So we're going to now convert that into a polygon. We're then going to edit clone, copy. We're going to delete the back of it. 
right there. The reason being, this will actually be our eyewitness, our cornea, if you will. Collapse all, and we're going to hide it so we can only work on the actual eyeball itself. Now, our eyeball is going to have a rather huge iris. And then we're going to narrow what will be the pupil And we're going to taper that symmetry. Aha, there we go. And let's. There we go. And we got a nice little. There we go. Now, we are going to take, uh, select that vertex and deselect the one in the back, and convert it to selected polygons. Look, yay, we have our uh, let's go ahead and grow. Shrink. That is our pupil. Now we're going to extrude it inward just a little bit. And we are then going to give it a negative 100 scale so that the uh, it basically bows in slightly. Now we're going to select that loop and chamfer it about yeah about half a millimeter. 0. 0.50. That's good. We're going to select these two, however, and loop, and we're going to make them a little. Actually, we're going to make that one a little sharper. but only a little, 0.25. And now we hit smooth one. Collapse all. And then we bring in, bring that uh, sphere back out. And just for the sake of making it easier for us to see, we're going to give it a 50% transparent material. Well, let's make that 25. Just so that we can see the pupil and see where the eye Okay. Now, let's unhide by name and unhide our Thunderbod 3. And you'll notice that it's not actually looking forward. So, what we do is we rotate this eyeball to there. Let me rotate it up a little. Whoop. We want to do this locally, not by... And that is our eyeball. Now, that looks quite a bit large. That looks quite a bit too large. That looks cartoony large. So I'm going to shrink it. 
I'm going to move it into a general position near the front of the eye. And up a bit. And what will happen is, after we get done adding on the horns and the claws and the teeth, I'm going to take this all back into ZBrush, and I'm going to move the eyelid to fit around the eye. So this is really not an important thing. So we're going to take this, we're going to move its pivot to an X of zero. So that we can mirror it over to the other side. And we're going to reset the transform and hit the normal and collapse and we got it. Now, the next thing is the horns. Okay. Yeah, what we're going to do for the horns is I'm going to go up here on this side where we can see the general shape. It actually won't end up being triangular. It'll actually end up being more pentagonal. So I'm going to make a cylinder with five sides. Because it's cylinder, I'm giving two cat fragment segments, and you'll see why in just a moment. And we zoom until it's a nice long horn. We can then move it out here. Okay. Now, why did we do this with the five segments? Well, let me hide unselected again. If you look here on this bottom left screen you'll see that there's you know effectively two pentagons with lines from the center going out to the edges if we had only one cap segment poof we lose all of it it's not that it just now just has the lines going from the center out it loses everything so we want two to make sure we don't have a five-sided shape on the center now let's go ahead and unhide it and we're going to rotate it a little. Because we want, this is mostly to, so that we have control over the direction of which direction it bends. And we can judge which direction it's going to bend by the direction of the gizmo. Okay. And we're going to collapse it. It will poly. Now, I'm going to grab these. Well, actually, first, I'm going to grab that loop and remove it. So this is what we wanted from the start. Now, I'm going to move these areas here. And then here. And that's our basic uh, cross-section shape for the horn. So it's almost blade-like on the outside. Now we need to go ahead and select all in that loop. And we're going to chamfer it just a bit. And then we're going to select all of these and we're going to you know, weld them all. Actually, it's a better idea to go ahead and select those two polygons and collapse them. Now, we're going to select all of these edges. We're going to grow them a bit. Not a lot, just a bit and move them into position a bit better. Now, we're going to now, let's see, how long do we want these horns to be when they bend forward? 
That should be good enough. So now we're going to taper it. But we don't want it to be a nice even cone because very little in, in life does that. So we're going to give it a curve to its taper. That's thicker near the base and narrows rapidly towards the end. Collapse all. And that is where our horn is currently. And now we're going to bend it forward. Excellent. Yeah, it came out almost blade-like. It's looking pretty nice. We're going to collapse it. And then we're going to select this one tiny little point right here and bring it forward a little bit to help the shape of the tip of the horn stay somewhat pointed. Now, we're going to select the loop around the base and we're going to give it a small chamfer to I'm going to select those and I'm going to move them in a bit deeper just so that it goes through now I'm going to go ahead and add one extra edge loop down each of these. Why would I do that? All I have to do is hit a mesh move one time. There. Now what's going to happen next, I'm going to hide the rest of it just to make things easier. Hide unselected. And I'm going to select every ring like that. I'm going to deselect these and I'm going to deselect the tip. No, uh, that one too, yeah. And I'm going to give it a chamfer. The chamfer will be a little bit wider than a millimeter, but it will be two. Go ahead and edged faces. I need to see how these are going on the inside. There we go. That's what I need. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to select specific loops. And we're going to push them in so that the end result has that kind of ridged look like a ram's horn, but without being as nice looking uh, as, I shouldn't say nice, I should say as benevolent looking as people, you know, like, you know, big horn sheep are big horn sheep. They're sheep. And now we're going to push them in. And there we go. Now we're going to select, since they have them selected, we're going to give them another sample. Actually, we're going to select the ones that are a bit closer to the tip and undo some of that push. because they start to be not quite as sharp near that end. And here, 
we've got a total jumble of vertexes on this portion. So we're going to go ahead, yeah, especially right about here, we're going to relax them. And that's good enough. Collapse all. Now we have them still selected by those edges, which are going to be given a very small regular chamfer, 0 0.01. Now when I undo the edged faces, mesh smooth, and we're going to relax it just a little, just to give it a more of a, yeah. There we go, that's a better looking pseudo ridge. Uh, six. Collapse all. And now we're going to unhide the body. And you'll notice it's now far too thin to fit in that side. Well, that's okay because now we're going to be inflating it, or as it's called in 3D Studio Max, push. Gonna push. Actually, we need to push it not quite so much. That is the default push. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to select the base, and only the base. And now we're going to do what's called a soft selection. Using edge distances of a few hundred, a few thousand, there we go. 0.333 and 0.333. This gives us a nice even angle of what's selected, and we're going to extend until we get to about there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to push, and it pushes more at the base. Well, too far. It pushes more at the base and less at the Uh, let's at the tip. There we go. And we're going to collapse it. And we have our horn. One of our horns. So now we're going to once again affect. No, we're not going to affect the hair. Affect pivot. And we're going to move that pivot to a zero. So we can then mirror it. Okay. Next up will be the toe claws. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what do we want the toe claws to look like. The reason I say that is do we want them to look more like nails? Do we want them to look more like, you know, talons? Or more like mammal claws? And honestly, I think I, think I want to make them be kind of in between mammal claws and nails. Uh, this is a dragon, not a reptile. We can play around with biological phenotypes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a sphere. What's this? Okay. Now that will be zooming in on the top view. We're going to start with the outer toe. I'm going to create a sphere. And then move it up. Now, the thing is, I only need a hemisphere.
Okay, and now I'm going to drop this down. And I'm going to drop the segments down to 16. Because I want to work with some... I'm going to need a smoother end result. And then I'm going to scale it up. And as an edible poly, I need to shrink this down. No, screen, bring this down. Reset selected. Collapse all. And now I'm going to choose. Well, I gotta rotate it first, yeah. Pointing out away in the direction the toe would go. I'm going to select these, and I'm going to do another soft selection. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this to pull out the nail as more of a talon, more of a claw. And I need to rotate it. No, I need to move it. I need to, yeah, that's it. I need to lock the soft selection first. And second, I'll pull out a little bit so I can see the direction of the toe better. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to copy this. Drag and, co drag and click copies. Because this specific toe will need some tweaking for totally different purposes. Now, let's unlock the soft selection and I'm going to need to select this top vertex and drag it back over here now next thing is I need to bring in well first I need to push it in because that's it's still a bit too much so push, oh no, not push, relax first, and then bring it up, and forward a bit, and then smooth one smoothing group, collapse all, and now I need to double check that the bottom doesn't have too many edge loops. So, hide selected, and it does have too many edge loops, yay! I'm going to select this edge loop, I'm going to shrink it. There we go. And then we're going to unhide it. And let's see how it looks when it gets mesh smoothed. Okay, we need to go ahead and move it just a little bit like that. Yeah. And we need to select these vertexes. Bring them in a bit. Especially this one right here, because that one's causing it to go. There we go. No! Ah! Let's go ahead and reduce the mesh move to zero. It does that sometimes. It doesn't like moving vertexes when it's an edge loop. There we go. Now let's select that 
vertex, yeah, both of these vertexes, and push them in, squish them in, and in fact, squish this one up, and this one up. Now, when we mesh smooth it, it looks a lot better. Yes, squish is the official term. And thus we have that. And now what we're going to do, we're going to select, we're going to smooth, uh, collapse it. We're going to select polygons that meets the edge. And that tells us that wet areas we need to go ahead and take care of here and here. Loop. Loop. And then we're going to disconnect that. Disconnect that. Oh, wait. No. Let's select this one and this one as well. Loop. And then deselect from around that vertex. And deselect from around this vertex. And are any of these polygons visible through the toe? No, they are not. They go bye bye. There. That is. That is the pinky toe! I just modeled their pinky toe. Now I'll grab this one and I'm going to drag it around to here. And okay, we're going to copy it. We're going to then rotate it to fit the direction of this toe. And we're going to have to bring it up a little bit because that toe's not quite as high up, not quite as low to the ground. And now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to select the top. Oh, let's undo the uh, soft selection. We don't want for this. Um, let's make this local or parent. Yeah, parent. Okay. And let's look to see how it looks in terms of direction. It's not quite in the right direction. Let me turn it. There we go. And we mesh smooth it. We get an oh, that's right. I forgot. I have edge faces. And let's chamfer. No, it didn't work. No, scratch that. Okay, so let's select those edges. Convert to vertexes and relax them. There we go. Collapse all. Now let's turn off the uh, edge spaces and mesh smooth it. And it looks a lot better. It's still not enough, but it looks a lot better. So, select that one only. Let's remove it. 
And now when I mesh move it, yeah, it looks a lot better. However, we need to lower it, actually, looking at it, and increase the height. And this is the kind of thing that goes through my head as I make these critters, is, you know, I need to, what do I need to do to this for the biology to work? What do I need to do to make it fit the nail bed? What do I need to do to, you know, dance all night? Anyway. Brain, what I need to do to keep my brain from going completely and utterly insane because I'm Looney Tunes. And let's deselect the sub selection and loop de loop, convert it to vertexes and relax. Don't do it when you want to go do it. Okay, loop and remove. All right, now it's time for the next front toe. And the thing about these toes is that the toe doesn't point in the direction of the nail bed. The nail beds are actually kind of at an angle to the toe. And now let's make it bigger. Yeah. That one didn't really need to be moved much. Oh, I think I need to move it back a little. Yeah. What we have so far, that pointed first toe, it's, it's looking pretty good. And we're going to mesh smooth it. And collapse it. Now we're going to take this last one Now the thing is we're still only copying it because we're going to need to use this on the back foot too Now This toe This, this toenail needs to go up And it's going to skew wrong way. Ninety. There we go. And we're going to collapse it. And we're going to select these vertexes and we're going to relax them collapse all and rotate it around that foot yeah <laughs> Mesh smooth it, collapse all, and we have the toes for this foot. We're going to start by take. We have one that hasn't been mesh smoothed yet. We're going to. Uh, that's the back foot. Okay, never mind. We're going to move it out of the way. I said move, not copy. Yeah, okay. Now we're going to start with this toe. We're going to attach the other nails to it. We're then going to affect pivot only, and as you can guess, move the pivot to zero, and then mirror them, copy, reset selected, normal. So yeah, it now has toes, z, 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 and toe claws on the on the front. And next up will be the back toe back toe claws. Then we'll be taking it back into ZBrush to adjust the eyelids. And once that's done, 
it'll be time for another break. <clears throat> In fact, it'll be time to do what's called mapping. Yay. Oh, wait, no. Tongue. Teeth. Gotta make those, too. All right. So, first things first, the back toes are actually close. To the back toe beds are actually closer to the ground than the front toes. All right. Now, let's bring this back slightly behind the foot. Rotate it around the bee. And no, I don't want that. I'm just drag it around to here. Zoom in. And you can see that the back toes are rounder, not as vertical. So we're going to go ahead and relax it, the whole thing. Collapse all. Now it's not at the right angle for one. Move it over. And we're going to shrink it from the bottom just a little. And mesh move it. Yay! That's that toe. Now, take these and bring them around to the front of the, this toe. Copy. We're going to pivot it so it's pointing forward for the toe. And just to check, we're going to move underneath. No, it's not pointing forward for the toe. It's pointing to the side still. We're going to move it back. We're going to relax a little because, as you can see, that corner is not behaving well. Even if I mesh smooth it, it would still be more corner than. All right, now if I mesh smooth it, there we go. And we can push it a bit, but that also rounds it out. I'm going to collapse it. It's still pointing too, no, that's not pointing too far in. So we're going to rotate it just a little bit there. Now, grab this one, and I'm going to drag it around to here. Zoom. Now, as you can see, that's definitely not pointing in the direction of the toe. So, we'll rotate it. I'm going to bring it over. And put it here. Now, as with the front feet, that means that this particular toe will be the largest of the uh, nails. But we're going to do it for this way first before seeing if we need to and we do first we need to actually bring it up off the ground it's a little bit oh need to lift it up off the ground and then we need to bring it up high it's a bit large so we're going to relax it I only need two, and then we're going to push it, and we're going to lower it to the ground, lower it back close to the ground. And then a the mesh move. Yeah. Okay. 
and yes, one thing that we're going to do after, in addition to fixing the eye, is we're going to be tweaking these toe claws and into end nail beds to fit each other better. And now there's only one left. And that's the inner toe. We're going to rotate this. And we're going to move it into place. And then we're going to rotate and look underneath. And that's not pointing the right way. In fact, it needs to point a lot more out. And let's move this so we can actually see. Oh, I, I see one thing that happened. We need to raise it up a lot higher. Bring it there and we need to shrink it because this is a teeny one I chose not to give this sucker dew claws you should note that because I just didn't feel that they would be right for him so now we're gonna relax it and we're gonna push And we're going to mesh smooth. And then we're going to make sure that it fit in. And it did not quite fit in. We need to move it a bit more like here. And there we go. And be one of the smallest claws, which makes sense with how we have the feet set up. And by doing so, we need to move that right there. Right, and now we're going to relax those until they go away. Collapse all. Okay, now. Now those toes are looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and make sure that we mirror the back toe claws. So grab that one and attach that one that one and that one and as we did before effect pivot only move it to zero and mirror okay then reset trans reset selected and normals collapse all and we have Everything but the mouth and the tongue. All right. <sighs> Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to save this. This particular file, the 3D Studio Max file. Let's go ahead and file save as. I'm going to be saving it in the directory for the Thunder Drake. Thunder Drake Extras. Extras, extras, read all about it. Save. I should note the top a lot the topology for the body of the Thunder Drake is done. Uh, we're going to be adjusting the shape so that, for example, the eyelids will fit around the eyes. But the topology is done. Alright. The file is saved. The file is saved! And I'm going to be going ahead and logging out, my friends. So, thank you for watching this part, Maximus. Is that any relation to, you know, Maximus, you know, the, 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 the gladiator, or Maximus, 
the brother of Black Bolt from the original comic Inhumans. Also, just because I need to go ahead and get a screenshot of the current status of the Thunder Drake. I'm going to make sure to take all of these and, except for the eyes, give it a material so it's not neon green. And print screen. Now I need to rotate it up a bit. Yeah. There. Now. Print screen. And control V. Move it up. And let's increase the the the, the uh contrast a bit, make it a bit obvious, and save this, then I'll be logging out. Okay. Well, I'm going ahead and I'm, I'm uh, ending the stream for right now, for now. For now, for now, for now, for now, for now. And we'll be moving on in a little bit to fixing those eyes and then oh making the making the mouth parts, then fixing the eyes, then it'll be time for mapping. Yay. Alright. I will log out when I see my hand go from five to one in the window here. Five, four, three, two, one. Lag.